it was time. Yeah. Like, when you see the same things coming up, game after game after game after game after game after game, 40 freaking games of the same problems, mm, get them. It's time to go. That's Anthony Sellers. That's Kellen Connolly. And this is Browns, Browns in, in Our, our blood. blood. Season 2, Episode 13. The Browns fell in Pittsburgh yesterday. That was a win we needed. No, that, that was... That was a win that we needed. Yeah. Up. Yeah, a lot of people needed that win. What did you see uh, that you uh, didn't like yesterday? <laughs> A lot. Yeah. 33-18. It got away from him in the second half. I think the first... Yeah, the second half was just an atrocity. Mm -hmm. um, the first half, you could just kind of see the wheels falling off as it kept progressing. Um, Nick Chubb was great at the start. He had eight carries for 50 yards. He looked really good. At the beginning, mm -hmm. but he ended with 15 carries for 65 mm -hmm. yards. His first set of carries were fine, but after that, it's like they made their adjustments and pretty much made us one-dimensional, and we couldn't be one-dimensional because we don't have tackles. Right, right. Uh, Baker was under a lot of pressure. TJ White got some a few times. Um, that one hit he took that, like, he went down, but it ended up being an interception. Uh, thankfully, he was down before yeah. the interception. Uh, he, he, he didn't lose his cool, though, I didn't think. He looked like he was... He was frustrated. He was you frustrated he for was sure. To. But at the same time, I, I feel like a rookie quarterback out there in that situation getting hit and just the team falling behind and not getting touchdowns and not converting and not being on the field a lot because the defense is on the field a lot. I still feel like Baker didn't go out there and make a dumb rookie mistake, which a lot of rookies are prone to do um when they get out there and then things just aren't going well and it's just not their day. And yesterday definitely wasn't the Browns' day. No. Secondary disappeared. Brown got loose for two touchdowns. Um that second touchdown <laughs> if Demarius Randall would catch the ball. Yeah. <laughs> he had to he jumped the route perfect. Jumped it perfect. You can't blame that like he just it went through his hands. It was yeah. just one of those freak things I think. Chubb looked good in the first half. Um, but then, like you said, they started making adjustments, and as they had to keep trading field goals for touchdowns... They... Well, see, that was a mistake, too, because you, you could just sense it in that first quarter. Mm -hmm. You know, they played well in the first quarter, but that first drive ended in a field goal. Yep. you got to get touchdowns. Like, against a team like that, you have to have touchdowns. And then your boy what? missed another field goal. That and an extra point. Three more... Yeah, and an extra point. Yeah, that's right. I, I was watching the highlights today, and he did miss an extra point. I was like, come on. Like, special teams has just been in such a sore spot for you guys uh, this this year. What did, what did you think about the safety? Just, it was That was dumb. Would you say it came down to lack of Here's, discipline? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I was, Harrison did not have a good game. He, he, yeah. he played terrible. Both tackles played terrible. It's been a problem all year, but it was magnified. It was magnified yesterday. I was listening to Locked On Brown's podcast and the guy made a great comparison about our tackles, which I just absolutely love. He said that the our the Chris Hubbard and Desmond Harrison are like WWE tag team jobbers. <laughs> so they're the, the ascension essentially. They're yeah. the, okay. I still think the defense despite the secondary um kind of failing at times the pass rush was stronger in the first half, but again, as the game goes on and they are on the field a lot, it just got weaker. Like, I thought Garrett had strip, was going to strip Roethlisberger on that one sack, but then I don't even know if he got back to him like that the rest of the game. Like, No, he only he only got the one. Right. And Ward, again, had a good game. He had several highlight plays, I thought. It, it's, once again, the offense failing and then the defense having to – try to bail out the team and then yes. eventually just a uh, law of averages is going to go against you and the Steelers probably looked the best that they had all season and then Jay, you, Connor going out there and just looking like a freaking world beater 
I mean, Le'Veon who? Offense, man. The offense just... The first drive, here's what was aggravating. Mm-hmm. First drive, they made an, made sure it was going to go to Duke. You know, those first two plays, two, two catches, he had, what, 16 yards on those two plays. Right. Then the, that, he goes down, and then they just stayed away from him. He came back in the game. It wasn't a major injury. It was just like a cramp or something. And they don't involve him in. Like, I don't get why you don't involve playmakers. And, and yes, we have mm. playmakers. Now that I'm back on the show, the Browns definitely have playmakers. Um, I get that they're not all all pros, pro bowlers, but between Baker and then you have Landry and then you have Njoku, who has really looked good the past few weeks. Like He almost had a touchdown if he hadn't been held. I really think he would have yes. found a way to pull that in. Um, and then and you... Johnson. And Duke. And, and Chubb. Chubb. And Garrett. And Denzel Ward. And... When he's healthy, Schobert, <laughs> not Schobert, Schobert, uh, I really think y'all have a lot of talent. You have a lot of young talent, but it is playmaking talent compared to last year's team where it was like, please, please, please catch the ball. <laughs> please, yeah. please, please stay on the field. At any time, it feels like this team could go off for 45 points. Yeah. And you don't, if you don't have playmakers, it doesn't feel like that. We sat through a whole season of last year where it didn't feel like that. So the Browns do have playmakers. I understand they're not Josh Gordon. I understand they're not a big body receiver. But Landry was getting a lot of looks. He's trying to step up into the role. And I really think that it's going to fall together. We just don't know how soon it's going to fall together, especially after the events of today. So... So in case you live under a rock or you don't care about Cleveland Browns football and you're watching this for some reason, like out of, uh, I don't know, it came up on YouTube, which you should because it's a great show. Hugh Jackson has been relieved of his duties as head coach. And Anthony says, It's about time. Yes, it is about time. It's about time. We said last week that this he had to win this game. We did say that, that they had to win this game. But like the thing is... He's not eating free in Cleveland anymore. <laughs> The 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 train was off the tracks for a long time. Yeah, like it started in training camp. It just it started in training camp. Mm-hmm. You can't say anything other than that. The defense has played well all year, but they're getting bogged down and they're getting tired because they're on the field more than they should be. Right, and the time fact, of possession is killing them. Yes, the fact that the four overtime games, you know, mm-hmm. on top of that. You know, the offense sputtering. The offense has to find a way to start stepping up. And that's why I say they need to utilize those playmakers. They need to find ways to get them all involved. Because when you can set up and do that, then it leaves a lot more, like, it keeps the other teams guessing when you actually use them. Right. And I've been off the huge train for a minute. I was willing to see what happened early on in the season. But then pretty pretty much after the the first Steelers game, I was kind of like, all right, like, you tied. Like, I hate ties. And I, I just felt like like you had a chance to win the game. You had a chance to win the game in New Orleans. Like, if they were going to pull the trigger, if I had, been, uh, had any say, and I obviously have no idea what I would be doing running a Cleveland franchise, considering I am a Raiders fan, woo! But the thing is, I would have let Hugh go after the second game. That The field goals killed him, the referees killed him, but still, it's just a, lo- a culture of losing. And when you're trying to build up, you can't keep letting the guy who's been leading you down, way down in a hole, shout out to the wire, control the ship. So, so long, Hugh. I hope you get another job. Hopefully it's not with Oakland or Las Vegas. <laughs> and may may the force be with you, my yeah, friend. It was, it was just, it was time. Yeah. Like, when you see the same things coming up. Game after game after game after game after game after game. 40 freaking games of the same problems. Mm, get them. It's time to go. Yeah. Like, it's it's a leadership issue on his part. It's 3 and 36 before yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 3 yeah, three thirty-six and 1. Mm-hmm. Costly penalties at inopportune times. Constantly creeping up behind to get you. Stupid gaffes on the offense, which is well, it's supposed to be his specialty. Yes, Todd Haley was calling plays this year, but I he's didn't gone too. He was but, that good in Cincinnati. But Hugh was, uh, like, that's his side of the ball that he wants to spend more time on. 
Yeah, you you have to have something. It's like, all right, let's try this. Here, best example. Last year in the Super Bowl, we were watching it, Eagles and Patriots. It was pretty neck and neck. And then the Eagles pulled out that Philly special. Oh, yeah. Threw it to Foles for the touchdown. And that kind of sent the whole momentum Philly's way. Like, without that pass, like, who knows what happens in the Super Bowl last year. And, like, as a head coach, you have to have something that's going to jumpstart your team and get them motivated. He lost the locker room, and he never got it back. He was first first to take credit for the positives, last to take blame for what was rightfully his to bl- be blamed for. I guess he's going to have to play uh, Greg Williams now. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to Mr. Hugh Jackson being out of the building, Todd Haley is also out of the building. And all we heard about yesterday was how him and Hugh were fighting back and forth. And now, like, not even, like, the Browns' official Twitter didn't announce it for a while, but it broke early, like, Schefter broke it. And it wasn't even half an hour. Like, I took my lunch break and Hugh had been fired. And, like, by the time I got back from my lunch break in 45 minutes, Haley was going too. So what do you think about letting Haley? There had to be something else behind the scenes that we're not seeing. Like he's got a stubborn personality, so there has to be something that mm-hmm. we didn't see with everything else that caused him to leave after half a season. But then again, it's the same thing. He's supposed to be the offensive side of the ball. He's supposed to be creative and be able to utilize playmakers and stuff, and he wasn't doing it. Right. He wasn't putting us in situations to win. He had autonomy over the play calls. You know, second and goal on the one, you set up an empty back shotgun formation. Right. Take a sack, and you're back at the 10. Like, And then you take a field goal. Yeah, exactly. Like, what are you yeah. doing? Line the ball up, go old school, and just ram it down their throats. That's why you have Nick Chubb. That's why you have That's why you traded high to let yeah. Duke and let Chubb run the ball. Yes. So let them do it. I mean, Le'Veon would have gotten that carry last year. I'm pretty sure. Or Connor would have gotten it last year, even. Yeah. I I agree. I was surprised because I immediately thought that Haley would get the job. Uh, But he must must have worn out his welcome. And so now, y'all got some semi-new guys in town. Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator, who will continue his defensive coordinator duties, is now the interim head coach in Cleveland. And I say, bounty gate aside, bravo. And the Bills aside, too. <laughs> uh, I, I think the defense has been the best thing about this team all season. Yes. Aside from also has the most talent. Yes. But he's doing things, too. Like, he should be running that defensive line, like, a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm thinking, like, spread it out. Because you have pl- people on there that have, ha- have playing ability as your backups. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know, you have Ziggy Ansa. You, you always talk s- about the depth. Yeah, you have you have depth and you're not using it, so might as well start using it. Especially with the fact that you're being on the field more. That's one reason why Philly was so good last year. Is their defensive line they ran they they didn't have just four starters. They basically had eight players that thought they were starters and played like they were starters, and they were fresh throughout the whole season because they the way they used their their snaps, like the right. way to watch their snap counts mm-hmm. and stuff. So and that's what we like something that he needs to start watching and get to. I think. November the 4th, the Kansas City Chiefs are coming to town. Anthony, what are your thoughts about this Chiefs game? Because I know you, I've heard y'all talk about it a little in the it's past scary. few weeks. It's scary. It's real scary. It's scary. That's all, yeah. I don't think we'll win this game. Right. And that's the first time I'm saying that all year. Yeah, yeah we've been pretty pro-Browns uh, here. Yeah, that's the first time I'm saying it, but they just... They got so many weapons on offense. This and is, Mahomes is just he's playing lights out. So y'all got a rough stretch, man. Like, but the Chiefs game, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say that y'all probably gonna lose the Chiefs game. Yeah. I would love to see you win the Chiefs oh, game. Yeah. Me too. Win it for the home crowd and for the new head coach and everything. See Baker ball out, see Mahomes go down, see the Chiefs lose, because I don't like the Chiefs. Uh but I, I'm gonna say y'all taking the L. So, you guys are 2-5-1. Best case scenario, you win 8 straight. 10-5-1, <laughs> baby! Let's go! Let's go! Uh, realistic outlook for the rest of the season. 
I think we'll be lucky to get five wins. I, I think Baker got seven wins in him. I think Baker is going to find a way to beat the Bengals twice, beat the Broncos, and beat the Ravens again. That's probably too many wins. <laughs> uh, no, that's seven. Yeah. So I, I think I think you guys have a chance at seven. I think the playoffs are out of the question now. I would love to see something happen where they really do get a fire lit underneath them and they run the table somehow and are in the playoff conversation come December. I'd love to see that. The city of Cleveland needs that. I mean, y'all lost all kinds of head coaches this weekend. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Looking forward to the Chiefs game. Hoping it's not a massacre. Hoping it's competitive. Yep. All right, so there's a FanDuel League. The Browns in our blood weekly challenge of hosts. The link will be in the description as always. I like that, weekly challenge of hosts. That's what it says, weekly challenge of hosts. Oh. Yeah, you, you wrote that in there. Huh. Yeah. And the Browns in the blood will be playing next year. Yes, it will, hopefully. So... <laughs> Our winner this week is Eric Jordan. Hold the belt, silly. He uh, he won 137.68. One, two, three, four, five. And then Uncle <laughs> Uncle Sassy Pants. Hey, he, Uncle. He was in second place, Gary. I was in third. Jonathan was fourth. And then uh, Anthony was last. Of course. So now, that my, my leaves... My throwing darts out of dartboard still working perfect. Are you really doing that? Yeah, that's pretty much been my strategy. I okay. said that last episode. So now, here's our overall league standings. Mossalung's still in first. I'm in second. Jonathan's third. You're fourth. Eric's still in the lead. If you want to join us, please join us. Please get and in. And please make comments. Make comments. You hey, can, I said that. You can win some money on the FanDuel League. All right, if you enjoy the show, uh, make sure that you are subscribed to Mossalung Sound Vision on YouTube. Hit that bell. Ding-a-ding-a-ding. Ding-ding. Yeah, you can you can say ding, and you'll never miss a notification when a video's uploaded weekly every Wednesday. We appreciate all the comments. The comments have yes. been on fire. Uh, appreciate all the views. Appreciate all the comments on Facebook, all the views. Keep watching the show. Yes. And let's hope that the Browns like put up a fight this week. Yeah. And, and make sure you like Monster Long on Facebook, and you'll be able to watch the show on there, too. And if you want to listen to it on podcast format... And you can do that at hyphenpodcastgroup.com. That's right, hyphenpodcastgroup.com. Or anywhere podcasts can be downloaded from. Or sold. If you buy your podcast, weirdo. So, for Anthony Sellers. And Kellen Conley. And Aaliyah Conley. Hey, I want to say to Kellen Conley. This is <laughs> Browns in Our Blood. blood. Go ahead. And the Browns in Our Blood will play all next year.